stay dedicated. I love you like I love the block. Let me not kill, live, slide for everything. Yeah. In possession of Glocks to walk blocks where I grew at. I don't wear this hat for the team. Where your hood at? I don't need a bean to knock him off. Where that fool at? He called you a bitch. Now you're cool. Where they do that? My city's so special. Pretty angels marked with tattoos. I just read a poem I received from the shoe. See, it's proof to me the devil only bleeds in blue. I stay true to your baby. Let's get litty light a shirt stick. They be popping mollies, but we get it off of State Street. Ride down to Long Beach. Let's get faded with the waves hit. Predicting my ride. They tell lies, I'm the testament Walk the main line, now I slide through and blaze shit I be Ryan rhymes like I'm campaigning for president I'll be Michael Jordan when you need me to I can close my eyes when I shoot for you See, I give you everything, girl, I ride for you You know there ain't no love out here, no But at least you got me Yeah, you know there ain't no love out here, no and baby, you gon' see Show you how to mind a man hustle, everything I do, all of me in it, a little bit of you. Show you how to mind a man hustle, everything I do, I put all of yeah. me in it, a little bit. Welcome to another episode of West Coast Street Knowledge. Uh, I'm your host, Gil, American, uh, aka the American Cholo. I got my co-host Sonny here, he's going to sit this one out for a minute. Say so what's going on, Boo Boo in the house, Big Root, and we got a special guest in the house. Introduce yourself. Thank you, thank you, Bozo. Hey, K. Emiliano. We got we got Bozo in the house. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Give me a second. You, you fucking up. You fucking up the flow, homeboy. You fucking up the I flow. Know, here you go. You do <laughs> oh, here. Let me see. Pause there you go. There you go. No, That's how you know it's real. Pictures. That's how you know it's real. Uh, <laughs> We're fumbling. We're fumbling. Here you go, homeboy. Here you go. So, uh, yeah, you know, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a good amount of people who don't know who you are, but yeah. at the same time, there's a lot of people that do know who you are. So let's uh, let's kind of get a little history. Of you, um, you know, where'd you grow up at? Um, I grew up in the city of Pico Rivera. Um, I was born in West LA, off of um, Alvarado and um, Francis. Okay, and uh, how was uh, how was your childhood growing up, brother? Um, my childhood growing up was beautiful. It was amazing. I have a Salvadoran mother, first immigrant that came here out of her whole family. Right. My dad came here, first immigrant from Durango. Um, so the entrepreneurship and hustle is embedded in me, like from birth, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Um, my dad slept in a station wagon his first two years here, developed film. My mother, um, lived in houses that she worked in, you know what I mean? As a teenager. And, um, when my mother died, she was her own business owner, you know what I'm saying? And owned her own house in the city of Pico River. All right. And how old was, was, uh, how old were you when your mom passed away? Um, I was 13. Oh, wow. Okay. So you lost her at a young age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So how that affect you as a kid? Um, Fuck, it's a huge void, eh, you know? Um, yeah. No more guidance, no more security. Um, I lost everything. That's you, the simplest way I could put you, it. You kind of lost the hope of life or what? Um, Not life. I just lost, I guess, love, eh, you know? Yeah, my, yeah. The love in my life was completely and, and, and then the streets started coming into you. Yeah, life. and the streets showed me stupid love. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just being real, yeah. So, 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 so uh, talk to me when, because that ha definitely has a big... Uh, Part of your life, uh, just the streets and the gang life, man. Uh, yeah, so yeah. yeah. How, how did that come about? Um, I'm very fortunate to have the same friends right now that I had when I was in fucking kindergarten. You know, is that um, right? Yeah, my whole clique. I grew up with them since that point. You know what I mean? Like we still, you know, that's why the love is there so much. You know what I mean? It's not like I I got to high school, met a crowd, and I was like, I want to join. Nah, like these motherfuckers you, know me from the from one. the gate. From day yeah, one. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm very fortunate to have the same circle. Um, we're all still alive, thank God. None That's of right. us are doing life. Um, a few homies are you know stretched out and shit, but right. yeah. So for the most part, I have the same friends, and it just kind of happened organically. Like my homies actually obviously knew when I lost my mother because you know school and shit. Yeah, of course. And um, their parents therefore knew. You know what I mean? So therefore, their parents like really um made a. Made it a point to reach out to me more, you That's know what right. I mean, and have me sleep over more, and not give me a hard time if I didn't go home for a week, or you know what I mean, holidays, you know what I mean. Right. They right, pretty right. much opened their house to me, like you know, like I was family. But how how did it, how did it go? Because usually when you when you join a hood or with your case, you're growing up, you guys are all gang members, right? Um, you but you you kind of evolved to a harder and harder gang banger. So yeah. how, so how how did you guys go from uh just being in the regular gang and then all of a sudden you turn into a banger. I mean, was you, all your click with the you? The homie started getting killed, you know? The homie started getting killed. Um, I had a homie that was like six years, seven years older than me. He was right. like my big homie at the time. I was 15. My homeboy, um, Casper, rest in peace. And um, he got murdered in front of me, you know? So, um, 
Yeah, that fucking kicked it off, you know. Not only him, but the homie Blanco got mo- murdered. Um, Cubby. I could go on and on Capone, it's, you it's, know. Yeah, yeah. A long list, like a good fucking couple dozens, you know and, what I'm saying? And then that's when you become uh, the hunter of the prey, brother. Become, yeah, 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 most definitely. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it has a huge impact on you, like seeing um, shit, people you love get their life took. You feel yeah, what I'm brother, saying? Yeah, brother. And it breeds another animal in you because you're at a certain age, too, where you're looking for purpose. So at that point... You got to think about that's like a perfect storm. You know what I'm saying? Like your your life is looking for purpose. Then all of a sudden death becomes your purpose. You know? Right. Uh, get, so, you, so you become very heavily like consumed by that. And that's life. You know? That's a perfect way of putting it. Yeah. yeah that, that, really, that, that really is. So um, altogether you ended up doing uh, two uh, terms in prison? I've done five terms in prison. Oh, shit, man. Uh, yeah. Take, <laughs> take, take, me to, take me fucking take me to day one. Uh, um, we, day one, um, it was war in the hood. I had an HK45 and a Glock 26 on me. I got pulled over. I went to prison for that in my first term. Um, I was enlisted to go to the Marines when that oh, happened to uh, me. So yeah. I lost that. You know? Yeah. You I wanted to become a train killer. Like, I wanted to. Yeah. You get paid get and get. <laughs> of it. Yeah. You know, that was my goal. Since I was a little boy, I told my mom I was going to do it. So um, when I was kicked out of high school, um, I went and forced myself to do my GED right. so that I can go to the Marines and shit. And um, I did that on my own. I passed it. Um, recruiters were ready, everything. But, you know, there was guerra on the hood. So a motherfucker was strapped up. I went away for three years. Um, I originally was supposed to do two. Um, ten days before, I went to Susanville, three hours. Ten days before I came home, I, I rushed a, a Norteño with a Fierro. Right. Um, I sliced him up. And I got caught and I did a shoe. You know, at the time, it was a with Deli Wep at the time. So I went to the shoe. Crazy part about that is, about that, is that my name is Reyes and his name was Reyes, the victim. So right. trip on this. We used to go. <laughs> so when they would take me to my hearings, to my hearings, um, accidentally, one time they brought both of us out. Oh, fuck. So I caught a second one. I fucked him up again, <laughs> like waiting to see the fucking oh, hearing fuck. to fight my case. <laughs> yeah. And then I see this dick fucking in the hole too. And I was like, fuck, I got to rush him. So I'm fucked again, you know? Um, but anyways, yeah, so that, and then I got out. I didn't last long, homie. I used to be out like three months, you know? Then I caught another case um, for possession. I was selling dope. Um, went back 16 with half. Because um, at that point, I was I didn't have no violent charges yet. You right. know what I'm saying? So they were all half. Third term, um, I was doing robberies to survive since I was like about 15. And finally, um, I got caught for one. Right. Um, I got caught for a string of them. And um, they sent me up for four. I did four years, four and a half years out of five or some shit. And then um, I came out again, and that's when I got signed to um, High Power. Okay. So I paroled that time. I got signed to High what, Power. What, what year is this around? This is um oh four oh five. Okay. And during this whole time, you're rapping, right? You're still doing your thing, or not? Well, I didn't start rapping till I did the time for robberies, like the four and a half years. This last so term, you were, you were locked up, and you were I was locked up, and I started fucking with it. Well, my primo, I had a primo that was extremely close to me, like a brother, and he got murdered in the city of Bell Garden. They shot him nine times. <clears throat> so that that death like made me start writing music. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, yeah, and I started writing music and um. You know, fighting my case, all the homies would come through the county and I'd be on the fucking tita, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? That's right. And fucking, um, so by the time I got out, the homies, the homie Stomper was rapping with High Power. Right. So he was like, the homie just got out, we gotta put him on. So right off top, Capone fucking wanted me in, Criminal wanted me in, so I started rolling. Um, that time I was only out about seven months. Okay. So, and then I went on another string of robberies, you know? Um, I want another string of robberies and shit, like a dick. I don't know, man. I got addicted to the life, you know? You got, yeah. Like, I was living good, homie. Like, the rap shit had me living good, and I just wanted more, you know? Like, I had nice cars on big rims. I was young as shit, you know? I had guns. I had the hood fame. Back then, like, thugging was still heavy in the streets, right. you know? Right, yeah, yeah. So, if you were like, you know, I was fucking a hybrid of that shit, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, of course, like, I was young as shit, super strapped, and I was rapping, and I was... You know, I was feeling myself. Top the, of the world, brother. The ego you was, thought, yeah, yeah, the ego was blind. You know I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, um, to have a, like, I don't know, fucking $500 in my pocket was not acceptable, you know? So, the minute the shit ran low, I, what I knew how to do best was licks. You know, I was doing licks as a child. Right. I got top of my homie, turn my rest in peace, how to do robberies when I was like fucking 14, you know? He knew there was no food in my fridge, you know what I mean? That's right. <clears throat> so, the homie showed me his only trade that he knew, you know what I'm saying? And how to do robberies, eh? And I finally got caught on for a robbery of my own when I was like in my early 20s, you know. So, yeah, I, like to, I did a string of robberies again. Came and raided me. Um, I took off, fade to Colorado. I did that to Colorado. I went on the run. Right. I bought a six-pack of rock stars. I got the 1911-45, and I rented a U-Haul truck. And I got an advance from Capone, you know. Yeah. 
And I fucking dipped, eh? I did it like fucking Jeremiah Johnson. You know who that is, right, OG? <laughs> right? No? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jeremiah Johnson. That, that's no, very yeah, familiar. I watched that movie, fool. Robert Duvall, sick-ass fucking movie. <laughs> that's right. One of my favorites, you know that's what I mean? That's right, yeah. Jeremiah yeah. Johnson, I did my shit, so I took off to the Rocky Mountains and fucking somebody told on me, eh, you know? How long were so you on the run for? I was on the run three and a half months. No. I was doing shows on the run. Oh, I was going to say, how was that? Yeah, that? I was doing shows on the run. I was dope. It was cool. Like, fuck it. I, you know, that was my only income at the time. Yeah, yeah. It was rap. So I was doing it and fucking, um, I got caught, eh, you know? I was cooking breakfast and they came and got me. So I went to the county jail in Colorado and that shit ain't nothing like what we're used to, oh, you I know? bet, brother. Shit's lab as a motherfucker. <laughs> no disrespect to homies in Colorado, but that shit's lab uh, as fuck. Ah, uh, shit. You know what I mean? Man. Like, every... Fuck. Every rule that you could break, fool, they break it there. You I, know bet, I bet, I <clears> bet. <throat> um, so I felt awkward as fuck, but they also had me segregated, you know? Right. Um, they had me alone. They, they felt like I was a threat to security, whatever the fuck. Um, so yeah, I, I came, they flew me back to Los Angeles. I filed my case for like two years in the county, and then I got a total of, um, at first, I got a life sentence, you know? Okay. Um, originally, when I, when I lost my trial, it, I had a peculiar situation, because I went to trial, lost my trial, and... Um, you know, my lawyer, the DA, and all them, they, they spoke, and they were like, all right, we're getting you li we're life. You're going to get life at sentencing. You know what I'm saying? Fuck, yeah. Because I got struck out. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I was like, all right, bet. So they prepared me for that, and then my appeal papers were getting prepared, you know? Um, but something, like, crazy happened to me, eh? Like, um, the day of sentencing came, and it was just like, like it was a lot of confusion. You know what I'm saying? My, my lawyer comes to talk to me. She's like, hey, I... when I landed, you know how you, you're in, in the holding tank way, and then you come out, and you sit next to the lawyer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I come sit next to my lawyer and she's like, um, she's like, I want you to bear with me. Yeah. Something's changed, you know? So at that point, I'm thinking like, all right, I'm going to get my 35 a year life sentence, whatever. Right. Something's going to change, whatever. So um, the judge, um, Miss Judge Tina, I forgot her fucking last name. I wish I, I remember because I, I have a lot to thank that lady for. You and her thing, I would think a judge, but right. I did. Um, for some reason, eh, she um, on her own um, opened up my file, my whole criminal history. You know what I'm saying? And after reading my criminal history, um, she went against the DA, you know what I'm saying? And at that point, gave me um, 18 years, you know? Really? Um, instead of giving me life, she gave me 18 years, yeah. So um, at sentencing, I got the 18 years. I went upstate. When I was upstate, it dropped again to um, 13. To right. do some other sh shit that changed. And then um, I was down 10 and a half years. And um, another law kicked in. And they were like, you know what? You've served more than your sentence. Oh, fuck. Like you're going home in 10 days. Um, I was still expected to do another three years, you know what I mean? 13 total. Oh, what a blessing. Because um, I fucked up up there too, right, you know? Right, right. I was fine. I got kicked out of four prisons my whole term. I got kicked out of Sentinella. I got kicked out of Arizona. I got kicked out of another Arizona. Then I got kicked out of Mississippi. It, it's bad know? when they're kicking you out of prison. Yeah, somebody. Kicking you out of prison. <laughs> yeah so um, at that point, <clears throat> it was like um, I was extremely shocked, you know? Because I had yeah, stressed out yeah. my date. Um, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I had 10 days to prep. And, um, yeah, so I, I got out, and you know what I mean? And then, you know, a few other things happened when I got out, but basically, um, I came home, dog. You know, I came home, my family wasn't doing too well, you know what I'm saying? Um, we had lost my brother in law, we had lost my dad, we had lost my primo, we had lost my grandma. Wow. So, um, yeah, my house was in shambles, eh? and I was the only man still alive, you know? You had to step there's, it up. Yeah, there's no man at home. Like, right now, I'm the only male. So, um, and I came home to, at the time, it was only three women, well, not three, five women. My two sisters, my three nieces. Right. <clears throat> um, and then for the last three years, it's been my girl, um, two little girls and her son. And then it's just me. You know what I'm saying? My brother-in-law just came home too, though, from prison. That's right. He did, another, he did a 10-year stretch too. He got, he got too shit out with the cops and shit. How was, how was the transition when you got out of prison this last time different from the prior times you got out? Your, um, your this mindset. time from when... I, Fuck, this time I got out, I was extremely paranoid. Um, extremely paranoid. I was extremely discouraged. Um, I didn't have faith in the law or or you know, like for instance, like I didn't I didn't I didn't see myself safe out here, you know? Okay. <clears throat> and it wasn't that enemies were trying to kill me. I, I felt like the law was trying to kill me, you know what I'm saying? Because of shit that I went through fighting my prior case, you know what I mean? It was a lot of bullshit, you know, a lot of shit was done to me that shouldn't have been done, you know what I mean? Um fucking cops tried to do me dirty, dog, like just crazy shit, fool, from wiretaps to all kinds of shit, you know? Yeah, of course. So at that point, I was like extremely paranoid, eh? And, and then doing so much time had me believing that I didn't belong out here. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, because I did participate with the business behind walls, and yeah. I did see a lot of shit, and I just felt like, you know, the tension behind walls didn't allow me to like, you know, like like fucking 
Yeah. Mourn for one, all the deaths in my family. It didn't allow me to accept situations. I just kind of had like muscle my way through it. So a lot of shit that I, I should have dealt with like a normal be- human being would, I didn't get to. Right. So I just got out and at that moment I dealt with it. Like I literally walked in and I saw the people missing in my life that I loved a lot. You know what I'm saying? They kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. You feel me? Right. <clears throat> but um, yeah, man, I, I wasn't there. You know, that's you know that's a big thing that I'm on right now is like trying to... um. Like, encourage homies, you know what I mean? Give that's, them hope. Like, my right. music, I'm, I'm trying to, like, you know, let motherfuckers know, like, dog, it's it's just re- really on you, you know, to give yourself a chance, you know right. what I'm saying? So, I gave myself a chance this time I got out, and um, I told myself, you know what, like, um, the blueprint has to change. The, the the approach to getting out of prison has to change, you that's know? That's right. And um, first thing I changed was, like, I didn't go to the streets for income, you know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't tap in with the homies that I usually do, and I didn't make the moves that I did before. You know what I'm saying? You end up back in there. Yeah. So I just held it down and I hunkered down. And then um, <clears throat> my sister was just like, hey, like go to school. And I was like, what school am I going to go to? She was like, fucking Homeboy Industries is always doing programs. You know That's what I mean? Right. And I was like, you sure? And I, yeah. She's like, go away. They're doing a solar program and I'll train you how to do solar panels. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, homie, I had already been out like four months. And okay. all I was doing was partying every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. single as shit. And, yeah, I, yeah, and I did yeah. have money, you know. I accumulated money in prison, That's you know, right. selling dope and all kinds of shit. So I got out with a good little fucking savings, you know. And I was just fucking young, dog, and, and single and fucking happy, you know. Right. So I was clubbing every night, going out. And um, my sister's like, like, look, man, I, I understand you're enjoying life and I'm glad you're happy, you know, yeah. but you got to get on your shit. Of course. So I was like, all right. So sure enough, I went down there and I talked to their fucking people and they were like, yeah, the class is going to start here. Um, You know, it's a strict program. You get three days to miss out of seven months if you're not determined and don't. So they, so they actually trained you at the <clears throat> homeboy industry? They have somebody no, come they, in or they, they, they send you they, somewhere? They paid for me to go to school at the East LA Skills That's Center. That's what's up, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So I went. Um, I loved it. Whatever I did it. And um, I accepted the fact that I wasn't going to get out of school rich. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right. Like a lot of people misinterpret that shit. They go to school and they're like, fuck, I'm going to graduate. Man, $27 like an hour yeah, to start. Yeah, yeah. Don't work nah, like homie, that, like they that. started me at the rock bottom. I didn't have no experience. Right. But um, I took advantage of the situation. You feel what I mean? I, I implemented my street mentality to work. You That's know what right. I'm saying? Like, street mentality is you don't let nobody get in your way. You do what the fuck you got to do, and you do it by all means necessary. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, brother, yes. So, I did that professionally, and um, shit, I started that three years ago, and as of right now, I'm my own boss, and I've more than doubled my income, you know what I'm saying, That's from when up, I started, man. you know what I'm saying? That's what it's about. So, um, going through that process and, and um, you know, seeing what's out there as far as money-wise, there's a lot of money, man. Like, honestly, like, we shouldn't be broke, dog. That's right, Like, 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 our, 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 um... Our people, like where we're at right now, like, you know, us that are born here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have no excuse. Like, in reality, like, I get it. You know, the st- we all go through phases and shit. You live your life on the streets and you get it. Fuck it. And if you're fortunate, you you get another chance. That's right. So a lot of homies didn't, you know what I mean? But that's their, that's their hand that was dealt, you know what I'm saying? If you're not in that situation, then you have no excuse because there's a gang of opportunities out here for you to do a gang of shit. You just got to apply yourself and give yourself a chance. You know what I mean? Like, as of now, like, honestly, like, all my little homies got out of jail. First thing they do is tap in with me, you know. All of them come to the fucking pad. Um, they get clothes, they get shoes, you know what I mean? Sometimes they get money, sometimes they don't, depending on who they are, you know. Right. <clears throat> but the first thing I tell them is like, you got to give yourself a chance. You know what I mean? Like, you got to do it. Like, nobody else going to do it for you. That's right. Like, no, I, I can't offer you a job, you know what I mean? I can't offer you education, but I could tell you where to go get it. That's right. You know what I mean? And I could tell you that it's out there, you know what I'm saying? But it's on you, like hunker down, fool, like show some discipline, show some gangster in you, dog. Like that shit you're doing is goofy. You know what I mean? Like thinking that you gotta be in the hood just wasting time or, or post it up. Like you're not doing nothing by that, dog. You know what I mean? Like you wanna keep the neighborhood solid. Like make sure that we are financially straight. You know what I mean? Make sure that your homies upstate got soups in their lockers. That's right. Make them shine while they're not here. You know what I mean? Like make sure the bills are paid at your pad so you got somewhere to sleep. You're not homeless in the hood all tirado. You know what I'm saying? That's make right. sure you're looking sharp. Make sure you got a car so you can take the little homies younger than you yeah, out man. for a pistol to meet some bad bitch or something. Like show them something to, to live for. You feel what I'm saying? So um, so that's where I'm at now because that's where I've, 
I've been, and that's what I experienced, and that's what I learned. You know what I mean? Um, I'm currently going to school still. I'm currently my own boss, um, and I'm currently independently doing uh, like three albums right now as we speak. You know, right? Um, multiple singles. Um, this year I'm dropping a video every two weeks. You know, yeah, you're, you're busy. I've been watching, yeah, yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah. You're busy. I'm, I'm doing like... my shit. Um, I'm boosting up my own. Um, like I'm just loading up content, eh, you know, everyday life shit. You know what I mean? Not like how you guys are doing a po- podcast sitting down. I'm just, you know, because I, I think. Like, from the outside looking in, I look at my life, and I see the shit that I do, and it's pretty fucking amazing, you know what I'm saying? Like, for a motherfucker, because honestly, dog, I still wake up expecting to wake up with that toilet going off because oh, my cell is taking a piss, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? I like, I still I wake you. up with that mentality. So, you know, the other night, I was having a conversation with somebody, man, and I was like, um, I was stoned, eh, you know? Because I just recently started smoking weed again. <laughs> right. I hadn't smoked till like, the last month. But it helps me sleep, eh, you know what I mean? So, uh-huh. at night... Once I know I'm not going nowhere and it's chill time, like, I blaze up. You know what I mean? Because right. it, it allows me to sleep, you know? Um, besides that, I don't rest. So, um, I was fucking high as fuck. And um, I told somebody, I was like, how the fuck am I going to stay out of prison forever, you know? Oh. Like, a thought hit me, dog, because I see, I see, like, how spontaneous, like, negative situations arise. You mm-hmm. feel what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't mean it like, how am I going to stay out because I'm banging in the hood. It's, I don't even got to be in the hood, you know? Like, right now, the where we're at right now, like, who does are praying on us, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The law's praying on us and shit, and they're, and they're, um, I know for a fact, me, look, dog, honestly, since I got out, like, we're on the calles is in my hood. Like, if you ask, like, about me, the homie's like, he's on his grind, That's right? right. Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, the who does know I'm on my grind, right? Yeah. Cause the hudas gaff for everybody up, you know what I mean? They start from the, from the fucking, from the guppies to the big yeah, yeah, sharks. You feel what I'm saying? All right then. So with that being said, I've been raided by tactical units. You know? Right. I've been questioned for murders. You know what I mean? Right. I've been snatched up since I've been out. You know what I'm saying? And even recently, the gang units in the hood asking about me because they see me shooting videos in my neighborhood. Right. So to me, it's like this: like, dog, I can't win whether I do good or bad. You know what I mean? And obviously, like me trying to give my homies hope is a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, but they, but they don't. That's the thing. They don't. They don't see that. They, they don't see the, all the shit you're doing for your homies. You're not. You're not going in there fucking telling your homies, "Hey, let's get some dope. Let's do this." Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're you're in there being a big homie. Yeah, actually. I'm doing the opposite. Yeah. If you're high, don't come to my pad. That's right, homie. As I mean, it should be. And, and if you're fucking around, no matter how much I love you, like, don't come unless you're willing to hear what you're gonna hear from me. You feel what I'm saying? That's right. I'm gonna brother. call you out on your bullshit. You know that's what I mean? Like, and I'm not gonna hold back. You feel what I mean? So, that's what I was questioning. Was like, damn, like, are these motherfuckers gonna let me? Like, reach that peak and that pinnacle that I'm trying to reach. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so it's tricky, man. But, you know, it's all discipline, man. You know, like, for me, I, I base it all on one word. It's all will, you know? You got to have that will, you know what I mean? Will 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 overcome everything and will get you everything you want. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, you definitely got that will, man. I, 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 I started watching. When did you get out this last time? Um, I got out 2000. 16 16 okay yeah. yeah that sounds about right yeah i started watching you probably like i don't know yeah two three years ago whatever yeah. it was and i and i've definitely seen the progression of not just your 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 rap your your <clears throat> voice your your uh your whole career you're stepping it up and i yeah. can only i can only imagine full if you would never got busted you yeah yeah exactly you would yeah, put that energy yeah. to this shit then you would have yeah. had 15 years of fucking of yeah, grind. honestly i was doing i was writing that music at that quality and that caliber then yeah, you could go back to 2004 and 2005 and, and lyrically hear me, and I'm already way ahead of all the homies. You know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And I'm way ahead of a lot of fucking black rappers, too. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I just had the unfortunate... No, I, I think it's fortunate, you know? Because um, I honestly believe, like, they would have killed me, you know? Somebody would have killed me. Yeah, right? yeah. You were running you know the streets like that, homie. So I'm not even going to say I would have got life. I would have got killed, you know, for a fact. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It happened the way it happened, and I'm happy no matter what. You know what I mean? That's right, brother. <clears throat> so, what... what 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 was like the biggest thing that you learned or when did you learn how cutthroat the business that you're in is? The music, um, I learned it pretty quickly, you know what I'm saying? Because um it's like all right, so there's always a middleman on top of the middleman in this game. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Like because at the beginning when you first start, it's not a clear path to like the corporate fucking labels, you know what I'm saying? So at that time, it's like it's almost like the best way I could put it to you is like an apprenticeship. You know what I mean? You started two years before me. I'm barely starting today. You know a gang of plugs and a gang of resources that I don't know yet. But you want to get paid for me to know all those resources. So there, there's no there's no like love. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. hey, I'm on right now. I'm two steps ahead. Like, I see you got like, come on. You know what I mean? 
Like, it's not like that. Like, everybody wants a part of your fucking talent. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but at the same time, though, dog, there, there's, a, there's a cure to that. You just go independent. You know what I mean? Like, nowadays, you don't need... The radio stations don't even matter, homie. The radio stations ain't fucking interviewing or playing who's really popping on the streets. Right. You know what I mean? I know artists right now that are fucking... Fuck, well in this fucking... Double commas, fool, just independently, and you wouldn't even hear their fucking name. You know, you don't even know who the fuck they are. Yeah, but I, <coughs> I, I, I personally still feel that we should begin some airplay, homie. No, we should begin airplay, but we're not because, um, you know, hip hop doesn't want us in, dog. Like hip hop doesn't want us in, and it. It's, and when I say hip hop, I mean the corporate side of it. You know what I mean? Because um, check the camera. Like the California artists and black artists that I fuck with or that I've run across all show stupid love. You know, um, they acknowledge the fact that. Our people are their main consumers, you know? Right. And their main supporters, you know what I'm right. saying? And they acknowledge that. So to them, like, you know, it's not like 10 years back where there was a lot of racism, you know what I'm saying? Like, right now, all the West Coast stars that I fuck with and that I know that I run across, like, show me crazy love. I'm usually the only fucking cholo in the room to begin with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I keep it authentic, dog, you know? I don't, you know, I just I just keep it the way I was brought up and the way I was. I'm not trying to, you know, change and... and you know what I'm saying? The only thing that I would ever change is just um improve the music. You know what I'm saying? That's it. The quality of the music, that's it. But as far as like my message or my style and how I look, like I'm not going to adapt to this how, fucking How era. much work does it take to do one of these videos? I see some of your videos like, fuck, dude. It looks like a lot of fucking work. Nah, I knock my shit out quick as really? fuck. Really? You'll be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a motion. We already know. You know, We've already been through that rough draft part. we already been through it. So we're efficient now. You know what I mean? We're very heavily efficient. And right now... um. We become so efficient that my team, you know, we, we sat down and it's like, we're going to put out twice the content this year, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to put a storyline behind the content. You know, it has to be more um, intriguing to the people that we're trying to sell to, um, the music to. But the 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 thing that I'm trying to elevate and I'm trying to concentrate now is more is like, at this point, dog, it's like the content, you know? Right. Like, like there has to be some honesty, like, even in the gangster shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, there has to be a lot of honesty because, you know, as of right now, artists that typically do the gangster music or street music, whatever you want to call it, trap music and all that, they're only giving you one side of it. You feel what I mean? All right. And I think the only the, the only other honest art, artist we had was Nipsey Huss when he died. You feel what I'm saying? So at this point, it's like, you know, we need more of that. And um, one thing that I that I gathered from him when he was out here doing this shit was like, like, you you can't. You can't put a price on that. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't put a price on honesty and being sincere. Like, that fool was one of the most lucrative fucking wealthiest artists out here. Just keeping it real. Still in his hood. You know what I mean? And never dropped the radio track. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's never true. did a radio banger. Like, the radio adopted it after he passed away that's because true. they seen who his who he was and that it was... They, they had no choice, dog. You know what I mean? At that point, to not acknowledge him, they would have lost fucking their audience. I, I never even thought about so that. So it was some bitch shit that they did. Leva shit. You know what I mean? I, I met up with radio station personalities and they'll admit to me like the shit sold out you know what I mean like there is no fucking there is no love when it comes to the radio it's all corporate dog like we're not gonna get there you know what I'm saying like um, we're not gonna get there unless we um succumb to the, the machine the larger machine you know what I'm saying the homies for one this is the thing homie you gotta understand um, when it comes to the entertainment industry and all that shit right no disrespect to the fucking lesbian, gay, whatever community, whatever you call yourself, LBG, whatever yeah. the fuck. No disrespect. By all means, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, God bless whoever's walking this earth. I'm not even tripping. But there is an agenda, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to entertainment and all that shit. Right. And the agenda is to um, take the masculinity out of all entertainment, you know what I mean? So, therefore, to influence the youth and the people and the community and the masses to become more feminine and more sexually orientated you know what i'm saying so therefore if you're a man like full flesh alpha fucking male right they ain't putting you on homie you know what i'm saying like they're gonna do everything they can to not put you on you know what i mean it's gonna take like you will get fools that break through like right now we have artists like the baby you know right the baby's fucking he's a man you feel me you could tell you know what i'm saying um you have certain artists like meek mill you know what i mean you yeah, have yeah, other yeah. ones artists out here west coast artists you know but they're not like, the baby's the only one that's completely on at the forefront, still beating fools up and still yeah, showing yeah, masculinity and calling fools out on bitch shit and all that shit. You know what I mean? But that's one out of how many artists that are out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, with that being said, um, the odds are against you, dog, if, if your music is, is um heavy, heavy on fucking masculinity or, or just being fucking morally grounded. You feel what I'm saying? Right. 
Um, so yeah, so that's you know that's a huge revelation to me. You know what I'm saying? And then and I'm seeing what I'm seeing, but um, you know, out here in the West, like now the streets are different, dog. You know? Oh, yeah, brother, major. They're completely very different, and um, you know, you could see it good or bad. You know what I mean? Um. I see it in both ways, you know what I mean? More positive than negative, though, you know? Yeah, of course. Because, um, you know, the little homies are killing each other. But back in the day, like, even the big homies were killing each other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, right now, like, you know, there's a lot of love. Like, I, th- I think fools, like, in their mid-20s up are, like, really opening their eyes more to the hustle, you know? <clears throat> because but, I get a lot of love from neighborhoods that i never thought i would you know of what I'm course saying? yeah of course as you should brother but i think it's also uh a lot of homies are stepping up like you us over here we're we're finally starting to get with each other talk with each other yeah, say yeah, hey yeah, yeah. we all got the same fucking different issues in our hoods homie. well we were blinded by not having access to each other before yeah, of course the lack of social media and the lack of transparency wasn't there like all we knew was like them fools are over there on the other side of the city and they be acting kind of tough you know what i'm saying <laughs> and like i don't think they got respect for us you know what i mean like yeah, you know what i mean yeah, so homie. it was you know there was a lot of mystery behind behind like like who's over there you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah. so yeah. um social media allows you to see a motherfucker is grounded and, and you know has has something to live for yeah you know what i mean so once you see that in somebody you relate off top that's a bond fool you see a motherfucker take a picture of his little girl whether you acknowledge it or not it touches your heart homie. Yeah, of course you feel me of course. little things like that don't need to be spoken or said like you see a fool posting family barbecue and shit you're like oh shit like feed me you know what i mean like you know what i mean speaking They're of doing good speaking about that how's your journey as a father i saw you walk in with your old lady and your little baby there i'm having a, i'm having a fucking uh a, a very like crazy um process with that because i'm you know i'm a reflection of the type of mother that i had you know what i'm saying okay like pendejo get the fuck over here you know what i mean like <laughs> levanta esa madre, you know what i'm saying yeah, tough tough love. tough love eh? Oh. tough love and and, and most recently because I'm helping, I've been helping raise like my nieces too, you know? Okay. Um, they're in their early 20s now, but when I got out, they were a lot, a lot younger and they had, they didn't have a man in their life for a while. And then um, even with my girl, like, you know, she's my lady and shit, but she's a lot younger than me. You feel what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So um, I'm having to mentor and like groom and raise a lot of like kids and like young adults. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. And um, my approach is, isn't always perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean well and shit, but my intensity and my passion sometimes translates as anger. Right. And they're not used to that. They don't know that. You feel what I'm saying? And I see it affecting because I walk in the door and a lot of times they don't even want to look at me because they're afraid they <laughs> fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right. you know what I mean? They're, they're afraid of what they did wrong. Or if I'm texting them, like, what happened? Like, they're, I could tell they're, you know. So, you know, I, I'm learning to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to, man. I mean, like, we translate love with anger because. A lot of times we're afraid to show real love. You feel what I'm saying? So it's easier for you to tell somebody like out of out of like not necessarily anger, but, you know, uh, out of like some kind of strength. Like, hey, I need you. To, you know, what I mean, why? Why the fuck aren't you doing? But because you don't want to tell them like, like, fuck, you're breaking my heart. eh? Like, can you stop doing what the fuck you're doing? Like, that shit really hurts. Like, wow. I have a lot of hope in yeah. you. I live for you. Like, I'm doing everything for you. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You feel me? That's hard to do that. To say, yeah. To you know say, what I'm saying? Yeah. Without without it affecting you. But it's necessary, eh? You feel me? Um, it's necessary. People want to hear that, you know? That they're the purpose and they're the reason why That's you right. are who you are. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now you're holding them accountable. You know what I'm saying? There's no sure and It's like, look, like, I need you just as much as you need me. That's right. So, you know what I mean? Let's get it together. Like, what the fuck? You know? 